So in the last couple of videos, we were talking about how to use technology to help us with our first six weeks project. Now I'm going to start talking about the math behind our first six weeks project. And since this first six weeks project is about probability density functions, that's what I'm going to go over first. So I'm going to give you the definition of all continuous probability density functions. It has to meet two things. First and foremost, when you find f of x, when you plug in x and get an answer, it has to be greater than or equal to zero for all x's. That means the best thing to do is to graph it and see what it looks like. Everything should be zero or above. And so, again, make sure that that's the case. No negative numbers as, as answers. Now, the other thing you have to do is take the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx. That means find the total area for the entire graph. Okay? And what should happen is your answer should be 1. Now, the reason that is is simple. In this case, when we are calculating probability of a function, we are describing its area as a percentage. So if you think about it, 1 is 1.00, well that's 100%. And so that's what we want. We want the total to be 100%. In reality, we can't have probabilities over 100%, so the max is 100%, or again, an area of just 1. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to look at the example that I had from my other videos where we were talking about gravel being defined in tons as this probability density function. So what I'm gonna do first is try to see does it meet the definition? Well, let's look at it. First part, f of x has to be greater than or equal to zero for all x's. Well, for most of them, it's just zero, so that's fine. But these other parts, I might wanna look at the graph. Well, when I graphed it, it was all above the x-axis. So that's a good thing. This was all positive. So. That means it fits the first part. Everything here is greater than or equal to zero. Everything there is greater than or equal to zero. Let's keep going. I'm gonna look at the second part. Now, when I go to integrate this stuff, I don't need to worry about where it's zero. The area under zero is just zero. So all I have to worry about is integrating the top part. So three over two times one minus x squared from zero to one. So I'm gonna integrate from zero to one, just that top part. Now everybody's integration is gonna be a little bit different. Everyone's got different problems. So in this case, the easiest way for me to do this one, I'm just going to distribute the 3 over 2. Then I'm going to go ahead and integrate. So that's a constant, so it's just going to get an x. That's got 3 over 2 x squared, so I'm going to kick it up to and x cubed, I'm going to divide by 3, which makes it 1 half, and I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So what I'm going to do, plug those in. So 3 over 2 times 1 minus 1 half of 1 cubed, and then I'm going to subtract um, 3 over 2 times 0 minus 1 over 2 times 0 cubed. Okay, so now that I've got that stuff written out, I'm just going to go ahead and do the math. So all that stuff with zero at the end, that's just zero. All right, so three over two times one is three over two. Uh, one cubed is one, so we're multiplying by one, we get one half. Three over two minus one over two is two over two, which is just plain old one. And so that works. When I integrated the entire function, I just got one, which is what I want. That's my definition. So hopefully that helps you guys get ready for the next part of your project.